G'day everybody and welcome to We'll Never Be Royals, the podcast where we talk about royal scandals. I'm LK and that's Rossi. Hey mate. G'day. How's your shit? Uh, look mate, I am thinking about putting up the Christmas tree. Oh, why wouldn't you? I think it's, it's, I think it's almost time and like what else is there to do? So might as well. Yep. Yeah, for everyone listening at home, Rossi was just feeling a bit crook before this call, so she might be a bit low energy, Jeb. <laughs> it's okay. We're all okay with it. Everything's fine. I'm just going to suck it up and carry on like yep. any good royal podcaster would. Uh, what a trooper. <sighs> but yeah, go ahead. Christmas. Why not? I mean, yeah. fucking A. Woo. <laughs> um, Speaking of not crook, a new queen has been crowned. Her name is Duchess Kate and she wears sequins. Oh, my God. Uh What is happening? She wore a fully sequined, full-length gown with a fucking cape to a movie premiere. She looked sensational. And it was gold. It was was gold. gold. Oh. And... It was like a couple days after Meghan and Harry made their big appearance in New York, which their big appearance was fine. It was daytime, so, you know, less fancy. But, oh, Kate has pulled it out. And then not only that, I saw that that same day she went on the tour of somewhere, wore a purple coat coat, and held a tarantula. Wow. I would love to see that. I, I mean, obviously the news headlines were just all about the gold segment dress. Oh. But actually a friend of mine messaged me and she was like, who, who is the lead actress in the movie? No one cares. Like what is she wearing? Because, Kate, imagine having your big moment, <laughs> red carpet, you're the lead actress in a movie and fucking Kate turns up, future queen, like that. Yeah, that would be pretty shit. How devo. Yeah. And even Daniel Craig wore a pink velour jacket. No one cared. No one cared. I mean, in Kate's defence, it is high time she's had one of these moments and that's probably why she doesn't do it more. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, so good on her. I think she... Even her hair, did you see her hair? Her hair was amazing. Oh, her makeup was amazing. Even her smile was like she was genuinely happy. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since she's been let out of the castle so yeah that's true yeah that's true because of oh, just... not because they're holding a hostage or anything but yeah. no <laughs> no <laughs> thanks for clarifying mate <laughs> okay 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 um <clears throat> but yeah as you mentioned also Megan and Harry bloody swanning around New York in in my opinion too many high-waisted pants yeah Megan, God bless her, does love a trend. I myself, less about a trend, more about a sequin. But I, but I, I respect it. I really can't fault it. I mean, what she meant to do. I mean, I actually don't think she's too, like she's very thin and she has no shape to her body. So high waisted pants do her no justice. She, she, it's just not for her. Yeah, but she is postpartum and so maybe she feels more secure Yeah, in true. a high-waisted pant. True, true. She looks great in a pencil skirt. Yep. High-waisted pants are not for her, um, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She did look great in that mini dress. Not as great as Kate, again, but she did look good in that mini dress, though I thought it was a little too bridal. It was, it was. But, you know, some like stones, some like sparkly stones embellished on that dress. Yep. And apparently. Neckline and hem. Yep, yep. And she wore a Dior bag that was apparently designed for Deanna. D- Deanna. Diana? I know. The, it's the, It's called the Lady Dior. It was named after Diana because she used to rock it all the time and they named it after her. And then also she had her initials embroidered on it. Um, hang on. Because it doesn't quite make sense, these initials. It's D S S O S, which stands for the Duchess of Sussex. I mean, does it? But- <laughs> Duchess D S S of O uh, Sussex. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. 
Yeah, it's not really initials. It's more like a, um, what do they call that when you just condense a word down? Abbreviation? Yeah. 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 Um, even though, I mean, she is, but she's not the Duchess of Sussex anymore. Yeah, but she's clinging on to that title with all she's got, man. So cheeky. Anyway. No. Um, well, it's yeah. just like Diana was the Princess of Wales until she died. That was also cheeky. Uh, yeah, but she didn't. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good Good point. Good point. I mean, same, same, but diff. She didn't voluntarily leave, though, I don't think. No. No. She didn't, like, cross the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, but we've been spoilt for royal fashion this week. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. Also, um, town and country are referring to this northern autumn as Diana season because it's the perfect weather for wearing like gym shorts and those long sleeve shirts that Diana used to wear in the paparazzi shots. They've got a whole article on it. It's amazing. That is great. It's, that's a great shout. Well I done. Know. Town and country does it again. Mwah. Um. Also, William is releasing a documentary on the BBC. I think because he wants to be like Harry. It's about the Earshot Prize, which has something to do with repairing the planet. So good on him. That's going to come out on October the third. Okay. Can't wait to watch that. <laughs> Um, also, uh, Buckingham Palace just released a line of commemorative beer in honour of Prince Philip. Oh, that's lovely. I wonder what it tastes yeah. like. Uh, I mean, just bad jokes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> bad jokes. I wonder if it's like fruity or chocolate. Oh, no, it's bitter. You know it's bitter. Oh, I'm glad you said it and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, my bracelet keeps making noise. Okay. All right. Um, what else you got in Royal News? Uh, uh that's it to be honest. I don't really I don't really care about anything else except for what everyone's wearing this week, which, you know, yeah. I'm overwhelmed by. Yeah. I mean, there is something to this Diana season. Like, Kate did get to wear the cape because the weather's a little cooler, but it's not too cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Loving it. Yeah. Um, also, they're saying that um, Beatrice, like, the Daily Express just keeps baiting me with articles about when she's going to announce her pregnancy and it's probably going to be in line with what her parents did which was a week later than usual so we've probably got a couple more days to wait okay that's fine I can wait Mm -hmm. I can wait but good on her yeah really getting it done (laughs) also I can't stop looking at her husband like he's very attractive yes but he is a bit older than her. Yes, but some that makes him more attractive. Yeah, but also he's doesn't he? He's been married before and he has a child. Is that him or is that the other one? No, nah, I'm pretty sure it's Eduardo. Oh yeah, it is Eduardo because the other one's the Amigos ambassador. Mate, you can't start getting the husbands confused <laughs> either. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I just forget which one of them's married to which one. But I, I know that they're separate people. There's Tequila Boatman. Yes. Eduardo with the kid. And as Eduardo was like Italian or something, right? Yeah, he's like uh, Italian. He's bougie Italian. Yeah. Yeah, like his last name is like Maserati or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like he's like... He's something fancy, like either his family has money or they may be a former nobles or something. Yeah, or probably both. I yeah. mean, good on him. Yeah. But anyway, I just, I'm not being sinister, but I just feel like it, it's an odd match. Yeah, but that's why it's good. Yeah, I know, but I'm always like, oh, Beatrice, be careful. No, nah, I think those girls are like more 
fun and smarter than we probably give them credit for. Like I think they know which way's up and I think they knew how to get what they want. Like she married a guy that already had a kid. Scandal. That's amazing. It's quite scandalous, actually. Yeah. Even Megan didn't have a kid. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But her mother is Fergie, so. Yeah. Wow. What a ride. Her mother does pop Valiums and reads children's stories on the internet. Yeah, like like it's her job. Yeah. Yeah. Bless her. Okay, anyway, that's anyway, enough of my yeah. opinion. <laughs> Um, shall we crack into the meat of this sandwich, mate? Let's do it. Okay, great. So today we're covering covering Catherine of Braganza. Don't call in if I've said that wrong. Um, and here's my, here's the bone I'd like to pick with the internet. So we said this season was going to be about historical scandals. And so we asked Google repeatedly, Hey, mate, what are the historical royal scandals? Now, the internet's understanding of what's scandalous and my understanding of what's scandalous are two very different things. The internet is like, oh, people were a different religion and they got buried in the wrong spot. And I'm like, mate, not interested. I only want to know the good shit, like the beheadings, the murders, the love children. Like that's what I find yeah. interesting. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, I got a bit hoodwinked with this one and it is more of the boring scandal variety, but I think it's still, it's, it's an interesting historical journey and a look into a marriage that I was like, huh, people in the 1600s had personalities and marriages. Who knew? So that's what we're doing today. Okay. Wow. What a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, can't wait to taste this uh, Braganza meat. Well done, mate. And next week, just so everybody knows, we because we're done scraping the bottom of the barrel, uh, we are going to do a mates for rates of Fergie's new book. So that is going to be a cracker. Even though we told you that last week, we're doing it next week. Yeah, everybody, I cocked up. So we we get on and hit the record button. Rossi's still in her dressing gown. I was like, hey, mate, I'm doing Catherine of Begranza. She's like, fuck off, you are not. We're doing a mates for rates. I was like, whoops, sorry, <laughs> cock that up. She was already feeling crook. Everyone had a lull. Then we hit the record button and here we are. Yes. Next season we might go back to production meetings. <laughs> Maybe. No promises. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Kathy. Kathy. Um, I'm going to assume you know nothing? Absolutely nothing. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, uh, Kathy was born in Portugal on oh. November the 25th, 1638. Yeah. Ever been to Portugal? Yes, I have. What'd you do there? Um, a, actually, a policeman let me ride. You know how they have those, um, are they called segways? Those, like... Scooters. Yes. Yeah, he let me ride one. A policeman let me ride one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the corner, there's like a guy doing a massive drug deal and I'm riding the policeman's <laughs> segue. Yeah. I like it. It's fun country. Yeah. I think Portugal is one of those places where you can order wine with lunch and nobody judges. Yeah, nobody judges. And they have um, they have a rich royal history, don't they? Oh, mate, don't ask me that question. Oh, okay. I <laughs> yeah, thought... I think they do. They certainly have a rich um, colonial history. Like they loved a bit of planting their flag on other lands and they were one of the big, like around this time they were conquering this and conquering that and then they got invaded by Spain and then they were technically Spanish but they didn't want to be Spanish. It was a whole thing. Yeah. So that's running throughout this story but they didn't really focus on it because A, I don't find it that interesting and B, I didn't want to get it wrong because I feel like that might offend some people. Yeah, okay, good one. Yeah. So is um is Kathy a Portuguese royal or just she was born in Portugal? No, she's a Portuguese daughter of a duke. Okay. Which at that time was the the most noble power in Portugal. I think it had something to do with like Spain and Portugal not quite being different or something. But when she's a child, her dad gets crowned 
King John of Portugal. So she becomes a princess later. Wow, that's awesome. I know. I know, good for her. Uh, so her dad becomes King John the Fourth. <laughs> Roman numerals. You are so hard. <laughs> I know. Um, and so Portugal's rich as fuck, right? They have just got all this shit. They're fucking. They're up in India, like trading spices. There, there is gold everywhere and silver. Like they're very wealthy. And so because she's the highest ranking daughter, everyone wants to marry her. Like everyone you can imagine. Like France and England and Austria and fucking I don't even know where this guy is from, but he wanted to marry her too. Anyway, lots of people. Um. And because of that, she was really protected. So she only left the palace 10 times as a child. Like she really grew up like physically in the palace walls, which I don't know, it was probably a little bit fun, but not that fun. Um, And so she's quite a subdued personality, which as you would be. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's a bit shit for her, I would imagine. Yeah, and they're also very Catholic in Portugal. So she's like the palace is essentially a convent. Like she's educated by nuns and oh, monks and shit. Yeah, that sounds really shit. Yeah, it's not great. So then uh, her dad dies and her mum's like this force to be reckoned with and she strikes a deal for Catherine to marry uh, King Charles II of England in 1661. Okay, 1661. Yes. So this is after the Tudors. Yep. This is after Henry VIII, after the War of the Roses, after all this. And why it's kind of interesting and why the internet thinks it's a scandal is because she was a devout Catholic and Charles was a Protestant king. And they created the merger so that. Um, England could get all this stuff from Portugal as part of her dowry and that's why Portugal started to become less of a global influence at this point. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bloody England. I know. It was fucking around. So um, she arrives in Portsmouth, which I'm assuming is a port. (laughs) Ever been to Portsmouth? <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to Portsmouth, but I, I think you're right. I think it's a well, Yeah, they probably didn't have planes in 1662, so unless she walked, which she would have had to walk over the ocean, I reckon she came by boat. Anyway, <laughs> so she arrived on May 13th. Her husband didn't get there until May 20th, so she just had to sort of twiddle her thumbs for a week. Um Then the following day they were married in two ceremonies, one Catholic one in secret that no one could know about, and then they had a public Anglican service that, like, was the shit. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they let her keep being Catholic because Portugal had, like, given all this shit up. Ah, so she could retain that. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it is kind of nice. I mean, good on him. I mean, it's just a gesture, though, because she's not really Catholic. If she's married, no, no, Protestant king, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, stand by, I'm gonna take a little drink, yeah, me too, actually. Sorry for everyone listening on the YouTube, that must be gross. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about the YouTube, yeah, um. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. So then they traveled to London as part of this epic wedding procession. And Wikipedia tells me that the people of London specially built a bridge for this procession, which I don't know how that works because it's 1660 something. And I presume bridges took a long time to build and they didn't know this was happening. But that's what Wikipedia tells me. It's probably just over a creek, though. Yeah, it was probably just a bit of plank wood. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, and they also had fireworks really? in sixteen sixty something. Yeah, that's um, that's that's a good royal wedding. I know. I just fireworks are old, aren't they? They're an old like Chinese thing. Like before paper, mm-hmm. there was fireworks or something. I don't really? Know. I definitely made that up. Okay. 
I, I, I believe was... you that you made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Okay. So um, Catherine is a bit bozo, but it's mostly because she spent her life within the palace walls in a strict Catholic environment and sort of wasn't allowed to have any fun. Yeah. there's. I mean, there's no opportunity for her to wear a full-length gold sequin gown at a movie premiere. Like, n- there's none of that for her. None of none of it. None of it at all. But she did get fireworks on her wedding, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, she should be grateful. Yeah, she's she's getting there. So um, Charles, King Charles's mother really loves her. She says that, like, she's an angel from God or something. Like, she's all about her. Charles is kind of indifferent because she's so bozo, and so he keeps boning everyone and Catherine's pretty humiliated and it's all a bit sad. Oh, yes. So he, ha- he had plenty of mistresses, did he? Yeah, he had, like, official mistresses and head mistresses. It was, like, very, like... On the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But he yeah. didn't, you know, do anything like his, well, probably not Uncle Henry kind of. Uncle no, he wasn't cutting anyone's head off. And, in fact, they did have an interesting marriage, which I'll kind of get to. Like, I think they they had a certain amount of respect and fondness for each other, but they also frustrated each other. And I think they genuinely tried but if you think about the circumstances like he's been raised as a king who has you know been given everything and told that he has all the power in the world and she's been raised in a convent to be kind of meek like it's not yeah you know and they don't speak the same language like she speaks Portuguese and he speaks English like it's all a bit of a mess it's not a um it's a clashing of two worlds indeedy indeedy um so she becomes pregnant and has at least three miscarriages and then after one of the miscarriages she gets so sick that she hallucinates and thinks that she's had a live birth oh no no and then charles because he does kind of love her in his own way um like lies to her and said yeah 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 you've you've had two live sons and a daughter and we'll go and see them soon. And like, he kind of plays along for quite a while. I know. Oh my God, that's horrible. I know. And then he had all these illegitimate children with all these mistresses and apparently like he used to kind of be like, oh yeah, that one there, like, remember that's your kid. And it wasn't. Oh, Jesus. I know. But I think he was trying to help. Oh, okay. That's, I don't know. It's not helpful, Charles. No, it's not helpful. Um, and so because she couldn't have a baby, the royal court were like, mate, you're Protestant. You've got to divorce this bird. Like, go get yourself a new wife that's fertile. Like, marry one of your mistresses if you want. Like, let's get this thing going. And he was like, absolutely not. I'm never going to d- divorce her. I respect her too much. Oh, well, well done, Charles. I know, but here's where it gets. See, it's this constant flip flopping. Um, but then, like shortly after that, so he had an official headmistress whose name is Barbara. Uh, <laughs> he was like, "Hey, Kathy, um, you need a new lady in waiting. It's Barbara." And Catherine was like, fuck off, it is not Barbara. And he was like, yeah, it's Barbara. She's like, fuck you, it's not Barbara. And then it was Barbara. And is her name actually Barbara or did you make that yeah, up? No, it's legitimately Barbara. <laughs> Barbara Palmer. Okay. Uh, fucking Barb coming in. I know, fucking Barb. And then apparently um, Barb was kind of a dick and then later he made one <laughs> One of his other mistresses be lady in waiting who was actually really nice. And so Kathy and her got along. But not okay. Barb. Fuck okay. Barb. I don't know. He sounds like kind of like, you know, current Charles. Wow. Wow, you are under something. Like not evil, but sometimes not receptive to other people's needs and feelings. Yeah. But also like, capable of love. Yeah. But and also Barbara is Camilla. Wow. Wow. And Kathy is poor Portuguese Diana. Exactly. Wow. History wow. repeating itself. 
That's neck level. <laughs> See, and you thought this was going to be boring. I know, I know. <laughs> um, and so they stay married forever. Um, she at one point was like, fuck Barb, I'm moving back to Portugal. He was like, you can't move to Portugal and I'm not getting rid of Barb. And there was a bit of argy budgy about that, but ultimately she didn't leave and they stayed married and Barb eventually fucked off. Um, <laughs> not the public didn't really like her because she was Catholic and people yeah. weren't about that. So what are you going to do? So, um, she, so she never had kids. Is this? Never had kids. And she also wasn't officially crowned as queen consort because she was Catholic. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's, I mean, when you're, that, that's your life. If you don't get that consort title, you'd be filthy, wouldn't you? Yep. Yep. But also she was already a princess, so maybe you don't give a shit that much. I don't know. Oh, I would. And she was also like she kind of had an interesting power because she was the highest ranking Catholic in Britain. And so she could like she had a little bit of control over how Catholicism operated, even though no one really gave a shit because it was Britain. You know what I mean? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she also um, started a trend in the court of wearing men's clothing because really? she liked to show off her ankles. Yeah. Wow. Good on yeah. her. So she did get a bit more interesting as she got older and she um, shocked the court by playing cards on Sunday even though she was Catholic. <laughs> I know. She is scandalous. Wearing <laughs> wearing trousers and playing cards. I know. What a woman. <laughs> so I, um I understand oh, why the internet thinks that she's scandalous. Yeah, I mean she is scandalous. It's just hard when these stories are so old. Cause mm-hmm. like there's no footage. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So um Charles gets really sick in like 1680 something. Um and he was on his deathbed in 1685 and he asked for Catherine to come to his bedchamber and she sent a message saying um I'm sorry I can't. I feel like I've offended you my whole life. And then he wrote back a message saying Alas, poor woman, you don't need to ask my pardon. I beg forgiveness in your heart and took that message back to her. And so they never saw each other. But, like, I think they did have a weak, a weird, twisted understanding of each other. Oh, my God, that's quite romantic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really odd. Wow. And but so because they didn't have any kids, he didn't have a named heir, right? No, I don't know what happened to him, actually. Stand by. Okay. Sorry, I'm asking questions. Um, Charles. I know you were asking a lot of questions. Um, let's see. Uh 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 so Charles, oh yeah. Charles had an illegitimate child and then the crown went to his sister Mary who had a baby who was William the third. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wild. Um where's my notes? Oh yeah, so they had a weird twisted relationship. He dies and then eventually after he dies, she goes back to Portugal, like when they all have to sort out who the heir is. Um, But the reason, there are a few fun facts about Catherine that come up in the Googs, which is, you know, apart from wearing men's clothing, why she's interesting. Um, She was the one that made tea drinking in Britain trendy. Really? What a claim to fame. I know. It's because Portugal had all these stakes in India and so she was used to drinking tea and then when she went to England she was like, Bish, I'm going to bring some tea and then everyone was like, what's this? And then they never stopped. Wow, that is amazing. I know. I know. And that's not all. She also um, made 
a cotton and porcelain like a thing like wearing cotton yeah I don't know what they were wearing before <laughs> probably just what were they wearing before? Everything. yeah it probably was too <clears throat> yuck wow yeah and then finally um the borough of Queens in New York City is named after her I know. So she's actually a very notable figure because she was the queen at the time when they were, like, sorting out those boroughs in New York. So they were like, yes, yeah, for you, babe. That's amazing. I know. I know. It's, and that's Catherine of Braganza, who you've never heard of. Never heard of. The tea thing blows my mind because the British go on about tea like they invented it, like, honestly. They really do. They really do and they complain about the the bags versus the loose leaf and, oh, how long you have to let it steep and, oh, don't put milk in it or do put milk in it. It's like, yeah, okay. And, yeah, and when you go overseas, you have to have the British tea. You can't have whatever tea they're serving in that country. You have to go and get the British tea. Mate, it's like British tea is just tetley, like relax. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, not to be emotional, mate, but I'm quite looking forward to having a cup of tea with you when I see you in real life. Oh, mate, it's been forever. I know, really, like literally, it's been years, but let's not dwell. No, let's not dwell. No, we'll talk about that, uh, Miley Cyrus. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I have mentioned the the COVID already this episode, so dollar fine for me. Yeah, rubbish. Yeah. Um, mate, that was actually really good. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. I think it's a good episode to listen to if you're like going on a leisurely walk. You know, it's not going to amp you up. Um, but I, I hope people like reflect and are like, oh, people in the 1600s had brains and feelings and hallucinations and complicated relationships with their husbands. Yes, I, I hope that's what people take away from this episode too. <laughs> yeah. Um, guess what I haven't forgotten? The page 10 game. Wow, let's go. Yep. Let's do uh, Catherine of Braganza, I guess. Braganza is B-R-A-G-A-N-Z-A. That was my next question. <laughs> I assume Catherine is with a C. Because it is, yeah, like all the other Catherines. <laughs> no, you, sometimes you can spell it with a K. Yeah, but not in the 1600s, I don't yeah. think, unless you're like Swedish maybe. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, she has an Ancestry.com profile. Oh. Um, we are not connected, Catherine and I. <sighs> okay. Um, oh, yeah, there's, I mean, page 10 is still about her and Charles. Yeah. I mean, do we think that when Charles becomes king, when if Charles becomes king, he's going to be called Charles? King Charles? Yeah, and will he be Charles the, Charles the what? How many King Charles have there been? There's only been two, so if he becomes king, he'll be Charlie three. Yeah, I, I, I can't see why he wouldn't. Well, historically they always did change their name, but Biz was like, nah, fuck it, I'm going to be Biz. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um. All right, back to Catherine of Braganza. What she got in image search? She was not a ginger. Uh, according to all portraits, outrageous ringlets, outrageous. <laughs> and uh, looks a little bit like Sandra Bullock, if I may. Yeah, she's, she, yeah, okay, she does. Yeah. A forgotten queen. Uh, 
um, they want to put a statue of Catherine of Braganza on Wilcox Road. Where's Wilcox Road? <laughs> um, in Lambeth Council. <laughs> I read that they wanted to put one up in Queens, like New York recently, but um, statues are not really in vogue right now and everyone was like, oh, Portugal really benefited from the slave trade. Are we really going to do this? And everyone was like, yeah, no, nah, probably not. Yeah, statues, no good yeah. anymore. Um, a lady called, I assume a lady called Frances Gasparotto wrote a comment under a blog post about Catherine that said, if my husband behaved like that, I would hack off his balls and wear them as earrings, exclamation point. She wrote that on July 19th, 2017. Wow. Was she living in the 1600s? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think she was, no. It's a very bold statement to say to someone. Yeah. 400 years later. <laughs> That's a lot of math I had to do then. Yeah. Oh, she brought the, um, she gave, gave the British the Indian city of Bombay, which is now Mumbai. She, oh. she the reason that's British and not, I mean, it's Indian. Correct all my language here. We're speaking in 1600 terms. It used to be ruled by the Portuguese as part of her dowry. She gave it to the British. I'm using air quotes, people, but you can't see. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and, you know, Nash National Portrait at the gallery, uh, they really put a lot of blush on her, so that's great. I think that's about all we're going to get. <laughs> It's a nice peach blush, actually, which... Yeah, it is. It's really... Yeah. I don't know if that she was... She looks less pasty than the rest. <laughs> uh, well, good on you, Catherine of Braganza. Yeah. I'm I'm glad to have learnt about you and I'm sorry for your, your childbearing troubles and your hallucinations and your husband that was mostly a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, um, thanks, mate. Um, I hope that after this episode you can maybe go back and have a rest and stop feeling so shit. Yeah, I'm going to um, have some Vegemite toast. That'll fix me up. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Um, we have a new newsletter coming out this week, our second one ever. Our website is lkmrossi.com. You can find our pods there. They're also on iTunes and Spotify. We got merch. We'll have new merch coming. Instagram is where we're most interesting. We are on Facey. Again, it's a private group, so you got to knock. Um, and uh, we've got big things coming. We just can't say what they are yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, great, mate. Well, thanks so much. Great app and um... – See you all of a sudden. Yeah, boy. <laughs>